I get a question all the time about how much alcohol I drank. Uh, this was a comment from Baldur's on YouTube, one of our own pluggers. And he said, how much did you drink, Kevin? Were you a binge drinker, mate, or a daily drinker? Yes, this is very worrying. And the, the worrying part was we were talking about the damage to the liver, or specifically in this video, the, the damage to my liver. Now, first, to answer your question about the binge drinking, I did a bit of both, right, depending on the situation. But I don't think there was much of a difference between the two things, right? I drank to get a high or I drank to get a buzz or I drank to, to get drunk. I didn't drink ever for the taste of it. I didn't pick up a, a bottle of wine or a can of beer and went, you know, I'm just drinking this for the taste of it like I would for an apple juice or something like that, right? When I was drinking, it was more likely to be a binge drink, right? Which basically means to drink more than the recommended dose in one session, right? <laughs> the recommended dose of a drug. You know, there's so much evidence around now that there is no safe amount of alcohol to put into your body, all from the perspective of your physical sense or your brain sense, you know, from your mind perspective. And I can definitely tell you that there is no safe amount of alcohol to put into your body in terms of the time and energy and the waste of life that you're having, right? So binge drinking, I think, is another one of those misleading labels. You know, it's like the magician's sleight of hand takes your attention away from what's really going on in your life, right? Look, I get it from an official point of view, if you're making, if you're having to make legislation, if you're, you know, if you're having to make rules for society, you know, alcohol is part of that society. It's part of a culture and it's been normalized in that society. So there has to be some sort of an attempt to give advice, right? You know, um, I could say a lot worse about this stuff, you know, I've got my own ideas about this, but I'll leave that for another video. It's not difficult if you're a long-term drinker to get into the realm of binge drinking, right? Um, if you're drinking all the time, you know, if you're drinking regularly, if you're drinking more than a couple a week, you know, once you're drinking for the buzz, the tolerance is gonna soon allow you to get into that binge drinking level, right? Your body is building a tolerance and that's a kind of a safety mechanism for your body, right? It's your body trying to keep functioning, keep functioning as best it can in this world, keep you doing what you need to do in this world, um, despite what it considers a serious threat going on, right? You're putting this stuff into your body for fun, your body doesn't see it that way, your body just sees it as a toxin. Uh, and the problem is tolerance is not a measure of damage, right? It's not just because you can tolerate a lot of alcohol doesn't mean to say that the damage is going to be less, right? Your body can build up tolerance to the effects of alcohol, but this has no real bearing on how quickly you can damage yourself with this stuff, right? They're two distinct problems. So the amount that you drink, the amount that you're able to drink will depend on a lot of different factors, right? From a personal point of view, I'm six foot two, right? When I was drinking, I was a lot heavier than I am now. I was maybe 50 pounds heavier than I am now. So um, I had a lot of places for the alcohol to go, right? I could drink more than a lot of people that I knew because I was bigger, I was taller, you know, um, whatever. Um, I know people who have ruined their lives because of alcohol before they're 30. I know that people who have ruined their livers before they're 30. So, you know, alcohol doesn't affect everyone the same way. There's different things, but guaranteed that alcohol is going to affect you in some way. When I was at my worst in Ireland, um, I did most of my drinking in Ireland, most of my worst drinking anyway. I mean, I, I drank when I was in the UK. Um, I drank for my first year in Spain, but when I was at my worst in Ireland with my drinking buddies, you know, there were some nights when I was drinking 25 plus pints of Guinness a night, right? Um, I rarely went on to shorts or anything like that. You know, every so often I'd have a couple of shorts, but it wasn't to get dr uh, drunk. I could handle the the amount of um, the amount of beer. You know, like I said, I was I was a lot heavier than I, than I am now. I'm six foot two, so you know I had the capacity to hold it. Um, I didn't do that often. I have to say that uh, I was a single dad for since my my son was twelve. I was a single dad. His mum passed away when he was twelve, so I had um, a business to run. I had lots of normal responsibilities of life, right? You know, so I would mostly only drink like that when I knew I didn't have to get up and go to work the next day. You know, I would drink 
it wasn't said that I wouldn't drink the night before if I didn't go to work. That was, um, I did that quite often. But, um, you know, those kind of drinking sessions, they were all usually all day sessions, all day events, by the way. And by the way, whenever I drank uh, uh, approaching those numbers, it usually started out with a hangover morning, right? So I'd be drinking the night before and I'd get up with a hangover. And usually these were Sundays with a bank holiday Monday following. Uh, we'd go out on the, the lash on a Saturday night. I'd have a hangover in the morning, not too bad, but enough to feel that I needed something to, to get me out of that, um, you know, to get me out of that feeling, that hangover feeling, the horrible hangover feeling. Um, Another scenario for hitting it heavy was if somebody, one, if either myself or somebody else, one of my mates had done something or said something the night before and we were sort of meeting up to try and support each other or give support in our own way and depending on how bad it was that we had something that we'd done, we would drink a lot, you know, and spend all day drinking, you know, just to drown the sorrows kind of thing. Um, so we go to an early house, which is a bar that opens in the morning in Ireland, sometimes, you know, around 10 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Sometimes the front door would be closed and we'd go around the back. You know, the place would be officially closed, but they would allow people in. We'd have a few pints there and then we'd wander up to town when the other bar started opening and carry on from there. And we'd do that over 12 or 14 hours during the day. With a couple of fellas, you know, a couple of pints an hour, it's easy to see how you can clock up 24, 25 pints, right? So, but my God, you know, um, the time and the energy the waste of those two things, the waste of money. When I look back at that, you know, and it, you know, I, I'm using that as an outlier, um, 25 pints, but it, it's still, you know, if you go out and you drink 10 or 12 pints, you know, it's still, it's a waste of a day, waste of all that energy. You know, your body has to go through all this shit to expel this energy. You're not doing the other things that you need to do, you know, the time that you're putting into this stuff, the money that you're wasting, but it's a continuation of this. It's the accumulation of the damage. But it's nothing compared with what it does to you and how you see yourself as a person. Once you start putting this shit into your body and you're quite happy to do that and you know the results, you know the consequences, physical consequences, but you know what, what's happening in your life that it's making you a lesser person the next day you get up, right? It's making you, a, you're just capable of less. And you know this, but you still continue to do that. Right, that's what, when I look back at myself, that's the damage that I think was the worst for me. Like I said, I'm a big guy, right? I can, I can handle that kind of stuff. I can handle the, the amount, I can handle the, yeah. I'm, I'm going into that think again, right? 260 pounds, I could handle the volume, I had a big belly, all that kind of shit, you know? But it was, um, a trainer said this to me once, he said, if you train like a couch potato, then um, that's what you're gonna be, you know? Uh, if you if you want to be a drinker and you train like a drinker, then you're going to be a drinker. If you want to be an athlete, you have to train like an athlete. Um, you know you can't. There's no half measures for this kind of stuff. So, but it all starts when you plug yourself into that way of thinking. That alcohol can give you anything in life, any benefits in life, right? When you give in to pre peer pressure in your life, when you go against your own natural instincts. Right, not to put this shit into your body. Your body is telling you not to do this, right? Not to put any of this stuff into your body. When the first few times you do this to yourself, it's just, you don't, nobody has good reactions to this stuff, but we persist. And from day one, you're putting yourself onto that slippery slope, right? So when you talk about how many pints I drank, it doesn't matter. You know, you, once you start drinking that first drink that you have and that idea that you can do this and you can drink without consequences, that's the slippery slope. So, you know, one of the things that we try and do, the beginner's course is down below. It's a short starter course that's going to help you see that you're capable of doing this, right? It's in the description below. One of the things that we try and do, a little bit in the starter course, but mostly in, in our program, is to take away all the bullshit about alcohol so that, you know, by the end of it, you're not... You're, you're, the mindsets that you have are the things that are going to drive your actions and your thinking in the future. So your thinking and your actions in the future. And that's what we're trying to change, right? And those mindsets. If we can do that, everything else looks after itself. Everything else looks after itself because you, you, you would never go down those roads, right? And that's the idea. That's the point that we're trying to get to, that you're never going to go down those roads. So, um, by the way, we're over on Twitter now. Um, 
uh, we're trying to establish a link in Twitter, so the, the link is going to be in the description below this video for the Twitter feed. I would appreciate if anyone goes over there and just give us a, a like over on Twitter just to start establishing ourselves. Um, the, the reason why we're doing this is because you know, we want to be on multiple platforms because we never know what's going to happen on this particular platform that we're on here, right? Um, I, tw I think Twitter is in the long term going to be a platform that um, is going to allow us to speak more freely. Let's put it like that. So anyway, keep going, uh, keep taking those steps, keep the alcohol out of your mouth and remember onwards and upwards always. See you in the next step of our journey. Onwards and upwards. Bye now.